Call of Duty has been my favorite franchise in gaming since I can remember. No matter what's been going on, I've always enjoyed Call of Duty, and ever since COD 4 when I really got into COD, I've played ever since and have bought in every game in the franchise and have enjoyed every game in the franchise, except for Infinite Warfare. But even then, I still had my moments of enjoyment on Infinite Warfare. But every game that Call of Duty's ever launched, I've had fun with including Vanguard and including Cold War and Modern Warfare. But I'm no longer going to support Call of Duty because I can't find a single justifiable way to defend them anymore. And that's going to come as a surprise to a lot of you because throughout Modern Warfare and Cold War's life cycle, I made a lot of videos defending Call of Duty and supporting those games and saying, hey, these games aren't that bad. I really enjoy them and you guys might too. And that's not what I'm going to try and do in this video. I'm not going to try and persuade you guys to dislike Call of Duty or like Call of Duty. I'm just going to share my thoughts and opinions. I trust that you guys are mature enough to form your own opinions and you're not just going to agree with what I say because it's what I say. I'm going to be completely transparent right now. I am still continuing to play Vanguard and I still plan to. I don't plan on stopping and I don't plan on stopping making videos. However, I am going to stop supporting Call of Duty by buying weapon bundles in the shop or by buying battle passes. And to be fully transparent, I will still use the COD points I currently have on my account to get the battle passes. I think I have around 2000 COD points on my account. I'm going to buy the base battle pass or I guess quote unquote purchase the battle pass because I'm not spending any money. But I will use my pre-existing COD points to get the battle pass at the beginning of every season and then i will get my cod points back because if you buy one battle pass you technically will never have to buy a battle pass in the future not a lot of people don't know that because they just use their cod points that they get from the battle pass regardless i'm not going to be spending any money on call of duty for the next foreseeable future and by me saying that i'm not trying to make you guys do the same i will let you guys make the judgment call on what you guys want to do if you guys still want to spend money on the game that's completely fine if you guys don't that's also fine i'm not going to try and change your mind or opinion but for me personally i'm no longer going to support them this video is going to be longer than usual because i want to talk about a lot of the issues at hand and how they play a factor into my decision and let's start off with the caldera integration feudives made a really good video on this a couple days ago talking about how it is so unbelievably stupid that they continue to update Warzone on a outdated two-year-old Modern Warfare client right now, which makes no sense because integrating Vanguard onto Modern Warfare 2019 just seems like the dumbest decision. Vanguard by far has a much better refined engine than Modern Warfare 2019. A lot of people that I've played with, and me included, have played a lot of Caldera recently, and we've also played a lot of Vanguard. And all of us can pretty much unanimously agree that Vanguard's movement and gunplay feels smoother than Modern Warfare 2019. And with that being said, it would make complete logical sense to, hey, when Caldera launches, let's move all of the Warzone stuff to Vanguard. That way, not only is everything on one game where if you wanted to play Vanguard multiplayer, you could go from multiplayer to Warzone without switching application. Not only that, but that would be a win-win scenario for Call of Duty. Not only do Call of Duty get to launch Warzone from the current game, which would most likely make people and influence people to buy the current and most modern Call of Duty, it would be better for the players too we get a better movement system. Updated and refined engine, the games all launch from the same application that a lot of us are playing multiplayer on. And for the players that play on console, Vanguard already has an FOV slider. So for those console players who play Warzone, on the Vanguard launcher, you would then have the option to have that FOV slider. There would be nothing but positives if Vanguard now hosted Warzone. It just doesn't make sense on why they're continuing to keep Warzone on Modern Warfare's launcher or client. 
worst case scenario at least, you could have Warzone launch from its own separate launcher. And if you launch Warzone, you can only play Warzone. That way it's separate from any Call of Duty title. You just have to integrate those weapons from other Call of Duties onto that specific launcher. That way, you're not tethering Warzone to a specific game. I understand completely that Warzone launched with Modern Warfare. That way it made sense during the Cold War and Modern Warfare seasons that it stayed with Modern Warfare, especially because Cold War had a engine from what, 2017, 2018, while Modern Warfare had the brand new Call of Duty engine. But for Vanguard at least, move Warzone to Vanguard or at least have Warzone launch from its separate client. It would be nothing but positives if they did that too. And the downsides with them keeping Warzone on the Modern Warfare client, Modern Warfare has become unplayable. There is so many people that are unable to play the multiplayer because their game's infested with bugs and hitching that has never been there before in Modern Warfare until Caldera. Same thing with Cold War 2. A lot of people's progression in Cold War has been paused. No one has been able to unlock camos or attachments since the update because whatever happened with the Vanguard integration into Modern Warfare's Warzone, it screwed with everything. And I don't know how coding works, I'm not going to claim to know, but from what I understand, if you make mistakes in coding and in game design, it's kind of like Jenga, where if you accidentally remove something at the bottom of the tower and the tower collapses, it's kind of like the same thing with game engineering, where if they make a mistake somewhere, it can cause big issues in other places, which is what I'm expecting happened, but it's still completely unacceptable. And to make things even worse, Raven, the lead developer of Warzone, fired all the QA testers. And for those that don't know what QA testers are, they're people specifically hired to play the game before launch and before release to figure out what the issues are and to help fix them and solve those issues. And because all the QA testers at Raven were literally fired, there is no way to test instability in a game at a efficient enough rate to have there be no issues on launch. Which is just completely stupid, and that's probably where a lot of the issues are coming from. Especially with this Caldera integration. I feel really bad for the console homies that play on console because a lot of them are unable to play Caldera because textures won't load in, there's extreme lag spikes, and sometimes the game will just crash trying to load the map. So a lot of them are unable to play it. So that means Call of Duty players are unable to play Modern Warfare and Cold War is not tracking and at the same time, those players can't play Warzone on console. So there are going to be a lot of console Call of Duty players that are not going to be able to have a good experience on Warzone, Cold War or Modern Warfare, forcing them to play Vanguard, which some people also are having issues with and some people just don't like the game to begin with. It's kind of baffling how stupid Call of Duty is, especially recently. They're stupid spelt with two O's. And the thing is, is I want to sit there and say, hey, Call of Duty is going to get better. These issues are going to get fixed. But I can't defend this. They fired the people that are supposed to prevent this from happening. So of course, when it happens, it's going to take longer to fix. And there's going to be more issues because there's no QA testers at Raven. Not only that, Activision is at the control. They're at the wheel. They're driving this ship. And Activision is having a big enough problem with sexual assault cases at their own headquarters. They're keeping the lead developer of Sledgehammer, I'm pretty sure, who has allegations against him. How is that supposed to create a good work environment where people come to work and are more focused, more content with their workspace, they enjoy their work when the person in charge has allegations against him and Activision won't fire him because Activision's defending him. It's just so dumb. If I'm a developer and my boss is very inappropriate at work and probably shouldn't be within 500 yards of a school, how am I supposed to focus at work or 
create something worthwhile at work. I think everyone can agree if you've ever had a job, if you work with people you care about and enjoy, if you work with friends, if you enjoy your workplace, if it's a very positive environment, it's a lot easier to get work done and make better decisions. But to contrast with that, if it's the opposite at work and things are always negative, it's so much easier to make mistakes, not care about your work and put out dog shit, which is kind of what Call of Duty seems to be doing right now. And I don't want to blame the developers for what's going on because the developers are basically like slaves to Activision and Activision could care less because they're like expendable developers. If one developer says, hey, I don't want to work here, fine, that's okay, I'll hire another developer. It's just a really sad state to see Call of Duty in right now and I can't support it because of that. Not only that, they're trying to milk Call of Duty for every last drop of milk till it is dead. Call of Duty right now is currently on its last limbs, at least that's what it seems like recently, and Activision is just sitting there trying to milk the teat of COD until it dies. A huge example of that to me is Vanguard Season 1. Vanguard Season 1 launched earlier than any other season in Call of Duty. Modern Warfare Season 1 launched around January because we had a decently long preseason. There was also a preseason to Cold War. And I don't know if it's because when Vanguard launched, kind of at November, where we didn't really get a preseason. But even then, Vanguard Season 1 doesn't really have much substance to it. There is not one thing in the Battle Pass that I'm like, oh, that's going to be cool. Sure, there's new weapons. The PTRS is a decent sniper. There's the new AR, and we're getting a couple new weapons later on in the season as well. But it feels like it was just rushed. Like, I know we're already in Season 1, but it still feels like the game just came out, and they're just trying to rush this content out as fast as possible, because, hey, it's Christmas season, and it's holiday season, and a lot of people are spending money, so hey, let's fire out this Season 1. So when little Timmy gets his $20 PlayStation gift card, he wants to buy the Battle Pass, or he wants to buy some bundles. One thing that Cold War and Modern Warfare did extremely well is those games were out, I'd say maybe almost two and a half months before bundles started getting integrated into those games. We all knew bundles were coming at some point, but at least they had the dignity to say, hey, we'll at least wait a couple months so people can get their footing with the game and then we can make sure everything with the game is stable first. But with Vanguard, it's, hey, you know what? The game's been out for just over a month. Here's 20 new bundles in the shop. Here's a new battle pass. Give us your money. That's pretty much it. And it could very well be because the release date was at the beginning of November instead of October. But that doesn't excuse it. And I don't blame the developers for this. I'll, I won't defend Call of Duty, but I will defend the developers because from what I've heard about the developers, they go through hell and back to try and make a product that we will enjoy and Activision will just spit on them. Maybe even literally spit on them. Who knows what goes on at Activision HQ and when Activision representatives visit the developing studios. But it's like Activision spits on the developers and blames it on them when Activision is the ones making the poor decisions. I'm assuming Activision said, hey, by December 7th, you have to have bundles and a battle pass to make us money. And then Activision can just sit there and use Sledgehammer or Treyarch or Infinity Ward as the punching bag as the scapegoat. Because it's, an, it's a Sledgehammer game. That's what Vanguard is. So people will blame Sledgehammer first, except it's an Activision issue. At least I hope it's an Activision issue. I don't think Sledgehammer, Infinity Ward, or Treyarch would be greedy enough because at the end of the day, if they were greedy and wanted to make money, Activision would probably just come in there and take it anyway. But... The state of the games is just getting almost unbearable. And the thing that hurts me the most is I enjoy the games. I have so much fun grinding Vanguard. I'm almost done the Atomic Grind. I'm almost done Diamond Assault Rifles, which means I just have Diamond SMGs left. And I love playing the game. It is so much fun. This is the most fun in Call of Duty me and my friends have had in years. I was really the only one that played Cold War and a couple of them played Modern Warfare. But the last game we all played consistently together was Black Ops 3, so that long ago. And for the first time since then, all of us are really enjoying Vanguard. 
And I know Vanguard has its issues too, but it's inexcusable to look at Vanguard and be like, hey, Vanguard, decent game. When the stuff that's happening to Cold War and Modern Warfare and Warzone is unacceptable. Call of Duty almost needs to take a year off. Like, just go cold turkey, no Call of Duty next year. I don't know how many Call of Duty titles there have been consecutively, but at least since 2007, so almost two decades ago. Well, I guess, okay, not two decades ago. My math was really bad there. Like a decade and a third. That's how long Call of Duty has been releasing consecutively. And that's going to burn a lot of people out. Players are getting burnt out because they are tired of grinding a new Call of Duty year after year. Developers are probably getting burnt out because they're developing Call of Duties constantly. And yeah, it's their job, but if you're a developer and your job is literally just to design, I don't know, let's just say weapons. How many years in a row are you going to design the MP5 or the PPSH before it gets boring? Probably pretty soon and pretty quick. I think Call of Duty needs to take a year off, go cold turkey, figure out what the hell to do to fix their franchise. I think a year off would be best for everyone. Not only would the developers get an extra year to develop their games, whether that's the Infinity Ward team, which is releasing the game next year, or the Treyarch team, which is probably working with the new engine for the first time right now. It would just, that's another win-win scenario. Players, get a break. Sure, there's gonna be an entire year of no new games but that means warzone will probably get more attention which means in the long run more people will probably spend money on warzone bundles warzone can see a little bit of extra attention from raven and can be improved tenfold the developing studios will get an extra year to develop their games figure out what they want to do activision will get a year to say hey you know what let's fix our game and our biggest money maker and let's make it a franchise once again that people will love and I guarantee that there's people right now working that are trying to solve these issues, but it's hard to solve these issues when Activision's main issue is trying to make $5 million a day based off of store bundles, which is a true statistic. They literally make $5 million a day on custom weapon blueprints alone, which is crazy. That is more money than generations of a family will see in their lifetime which is ridiculous. And that's in a single day. And yes, they have billions of dollars and they can hire a ridiculous amount of employees so they could technically do it all at once, but I still think taking a year off would just benefit the franchise the most, benefit the players the most. And imagine the hype when a new Call of Duty game gets released after the year break. Everyone has kind of put Call of Duty in the back seat, they're, pl they're replaying old games. They're replaying what? Like, maybe they went back to Cold War. Maybe they went back to Modern Warfare. And then all of a sudden, we get a trailer for Modern Warfare 2. Well, I guess this would be the like sequel to Modern Warfare 2019, not the actual like Modern Warfare 2 remaster. But we get a sequel for Modern Warfare 2019, and the trailer drops almost a year after we've seen a new Call of Duty release. Imagine the hype that would get. Imagine the issues that would be solved. Imagine how excited players would be because they actually got to take a break. And the reason I say this would be a good idea, look at Zombies. Zombies was pretty oversaturated, let's be honest. Black Ops 3, Infinite Warfare, World War 2, Black Ops 4. Those were four games back to back where we got zombies. Everyone was pretty tired of grinding a new Easter egg every couple months and mastering the map every couple months. Modern Warfare 2019 didn't have zombies. So when zombies came back in Cold War, look at how popular that was. It was the most popular zombies experience ever, regardless of if you liked it or not. It was the most popular. Just saying, just putting that out there. That's pretty much all I have to say. Uh, as I said, I'm going to continue to play Vanguard. I'm going to continue to make videos because I mean, that's my job and that's, what makes me money to be able to pay for stuff and uh yeah i'm not supporting call of duty anymore i'm not going to try and defend them if they do something right and if they do something good i will say hey they did this good this doesn't 
excuse all the mistakes that they've previously made, but hey, at least they're showing some promise. That might happen, but I'm not going to financially support Call of Duty anymore. I'm going to leave that there. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below, and uh, I'm about to head out. If there is one, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.